Hey, Billy Glisson with Power Core 360 here with Greta, and today we're talking about the glutes, right? Greta, in your world, in the fitness world, why are the glutes important? What are people asking you for? Why, why do they want to work on their glutes? Uh, they want to work on their glutes because it looks good uh, just to get their butt so they don't have a flat butt kind of get that blue butt um, or that um, big rounded butt, um, especially for women. Gotcha. Um, and then just to even out their legs so they're not more front dominant so they can work on their back, their strength of their low back chain. Gotcha. Good. So, cool. Yeah. In my world, in the sports world, everything's about the glutes. From an athlete's perspective, it's probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest power generator in the body. So if somebody's trying to jump higher, run faster, turn, hit, kick, throw, punch with more power, it all really comes down to can they load their glutes, load their hips. So really important in both worlds. Uh, let's go through and talk about um, some exercises that are very common, right? Well, we'll start with some real common ones you'd see in your world in the fitness area, and then we're gonna come back and talk about, and I'm gonna show you some of the things I do in the, in the sports world. So uh, let's start with a common bridge, if you don't mind. So she's gonna go ahead and start her bridge. She's a, this is a two-legged bridge. She's up off two feet. Ideally, what we're looking for is to be able to go ahead and take it out and go static. Ideally, what we're looking for is the feet back towards the butt and be able to lift up the hip and pelvis to where the thigh and the upper body are pretty well straight, okay? Um, now, Greta, from your perspective, what happens when you do the bridge? What are you feeling? A lot in your glutes? Because that's what we're doing. Oh, yeah, for. in my glutes and my hamstrings. Okay. Um, I usually don't feel it uh, on my outside part of my glutes. I just feel it in the middle okay. part. Um, and then sometimes my part of my legs. Okay. okay. Do it one more time. And as you're doing that, I'm going to talk about what I commonly see a lot of people doing and some of the feedback um, that I hear from athletes, right? Oftentimes, once again, we're trying to get the hip and pelvis up. Ideally, we'd love the glutes muscles to be really on, but oftentimes what happens uh, with athletes is they're very quad dominant. Quads are doing a lot of the work and the back extensors, the low back's doing a lot of the work. Um, relax, please, okay? And so when, when athletes or fitness people are doing that, encourage them to start slow and really maybe squeeze their glutes, slow the motion down, and maybe don't try to come up so high. Maybe come to the point where if they're tight through the front of their thighs, the quads and the hip flexors, if they go up too high, then they're just gonna be fighting their hip flexors and quads. Take it to the point where they can hold it, keep their glutes on, and minimize the quads work and the lower back. The lower back should be pretty much relaxed. The quads will have some tension, but we really wanna focus on the glutes, the butt muscles doing this, right? Okay. We could take this and do a more advanced progression, choose a leg, and we could do a single leg bridge, right? So what we're trying to do is the same thing, and even an easier progression, just go ahead and bend that knee again to start with. That's an easier progression right there. If we have her actually now extend the knee, straighten the leg, that's harder, okay? And relax. You know, the last couple, two or three videos we've done, we've talked a lot about transverse abdominis, right, and what else, multifidus. Yeah. Well, we shouldn't, we shouldn't forget about those things here because we're really, we're really talking about turning on the glutes to add to our level of pelvic stability, the ability to control our hips, pelvis, and lower back. So let's do a bridge here, but before we do the bridge, turn on your transverse abs again, right? Turn on your multifidus for me and just do a two-legged bridge and only take it up as high as you can where you just feel like everything's stable. And I'm noticing you're not coming as high, but I'm fine with that because you're probably getting much more control and work around the entire pelvis and core. Awesome. Relax. Okay. Very good. Um, what's another one? Kickbacks. Kickbacks. Okay. So let's do some kickbacks. Now, once again, in my world, I'm really concerned about not just what you do, but how well you do it. So um, if you do this, a lot of people I see in, in, the, in the fitness club, they're doing this. Go ahead and do that. Do it kind of sloppy. Do it kind of quick. And so the leg's going up. There may be all kinds of rotation going on with the pelvis. You see the low back really arching. And so, yeah, the 
the hip, the right glute's probably getting some work, some of the hamstring, but the low back's rotating and arching. Um, now let's go back and do this with a lot of control. So let's turn your transverse abs on, let's turn your multifidus on. So we're gonna try to hold the hips and pelvis still and just see the hip move, awesome. Slow that down really nice, do three reps. Now what we're seeing, it's almost like a plank. We're turning on a lot of the stability muscles. Muscles will control the spine, the pelvis, the lower back, and we're really now targeting the glute. We're gonna get a lot more out of that. And by the way, there's a lot more muscles working, right? When more muscles work, you're burning more calories. It's a lot more work, but that's what you want, right? Instead of staying in the gym three hours, how about we really focus on the glutes, turn some other muscles on, get them strong at the same time, burn more calories, right? Cool in your world? Yeah. So we can do that with both legs. We could put a band on there. And in fact, let's do that. Let's cut for a second, put a band on, and, and show them what's going on. Just let the can roll. Scoot that way a little bit. Just, yeah, that's good right there. Cool. All right. All right, so in this case, we went to put an ankle cuff on. We've got a band hooked uh, to the right ankle here. We're going to go back and do a kickback, but we're going to do the same thing we were just doing. We're going to turn the multipedis on. We're going to turn the transverse abs on. So we're going to stabilize the hips and pelvis. Just slowly focus on the right glute here, just extending. Shouldn't see any motion going on anywhere else. Don't lose your pelvic control. Try to extend that right hip a little further. Nice, right there is awesome. So I'm looking to make sure that there's no rotation going on in the pelvis, either this way or front or back. I'm just looking for the upper body to be stable. That's awesome. I can see the right glute tensing up and working. That's awesome. One more rep. Okay. All right, I'm gonna have you stand up and we're gonna to go to a little less common exercise. You can just step back and you'll face that direction. You're gonna put all your weight on your left foot, okay? And we're gonna work on your right glute once again, but the first thing you're gonna do is turn on your TA, transverse abdominis, turn on your multipedis. Keep those on and allow this right leg to move forward a little bit. Don't lose your core and just slowly pull and extend the right hip back. Try to take it back behind you a little bit. Extend that glute, but don't lose the pelvis. And let's do about four or five reps with that. And you can see she's really working because she's on one leg. It's not just her right glute that's having to work, her core is having to work. Her hip and butt and glute muscles on the opposite side are having to work to stabilize her pelvis, not to let it turn. And especially as this leg's coming back, there's a rotational force that's going on. She's gonna get a lot more out of this exercise than just being on her hands and knees. This glute's working, the opposite glute's working, the core's working, and she's burning a lot more calories than being on her hands and knees. And relax. All right, now we're in my world. Now we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how I use the PowerCore 360, the hip trainer and some bands uh, to actually kick on the glute. So when I'm working with an athlete, especially an athlete who uh, I might be rehabbing or coming out of post-rehab with a physical therapist and I'm trying to transition them from injury 
into back on the field, back on the court. This is what I do. And it's just a much better way to get the glutes on, okay? So the bands are pulling her back. And what I'm gonna have her do is actually put her knees together, feet together. I want her to turn on her uh, TA, transverse abs. And I want her to put her hips right on her pelvis because right now you can kind of see there's a lot of arch in her lower back. So what I want her to do is take her hands and I want her to tip her pelvis back under. I'm gonna help her here for a little bit because she just arched her back. I want her to feel that. And I don't want, I want this to be in and up, okay? And I want her to hold that. So right now to hold that position, both right and left glutes are on to stabilize. And we've taken the hip almost into extension. For her, it, it's maximum extension. She can't go any further because her hip flexors and quads are a little tight. They are gonna be for a lot of you guys out there as well. Transverse abs are on, we're trying to get multifidus on at the same time, but more importantly now, we're targeting the glutes and trying to hold that on, right? So right now, it doesn't look like a lot of work, but this is a static or an isometric exercise to really kick those on, okay? You can put your hands in, in, on the ground and relax for about 20 seconds. So we're giving her a little recovery. Now we're gonna come back instead of doing a two-legged um, tuck here, we're gonna basically do a one-legged. So we'll actually take your right foot and bring it forward, okay? You're gonna put your hands back on your pelvis, turn your transverse abs on, turn your multifidus on, turn your left glute on, and take your pelvis a little bit forward and hold right there. Once again, we're looking for, I don't want her arching her back, I want the stretch to come at her left hip. And so I'm starting to see the left hip. Here's a real important key. If her left glute muscle's on, it sends a signal, something called reciprocal inhibition. That's a fancy term in the body to say, when this muscle group's on the glute, its opposing muscle group, which is the hip flexor, gets shut off. And so we're actually doing two things at once. We're strengthening and toning up the left glute. At the same time, we're stretching left hip flexor and left quad a little bit, okay? Let's go ahead and switch legs. So we're gonna get tall, we're gonna turn our transverse abs on, try to get multifidus on, put your hands on your pelvis, tuck back under, right glute needs to be on. We're gonna hold that, we're gonna breathe, of course. We're gonna hold that 20 or 30 seconds. Now, once again, we're, we're working on the right glute, at the same time we're doing a hip flexor stretch and getting a lot out of this. Okay, and relax. I'm gonna have you just stand up. And we're going to go through what I call, well, what a lot of people call Romanian deadlift on two legs. So, we're going to pretend here's your Olympic bar, okay? And what I want you to do initially is don't come out too far. Go back just a hair. And I want you to be able to stand up straight, okay? And to stand up straight, you're going to have to learn to turn on your transverse abs, your multipedis, and get your glutes on. Otherwise, it's either going to pull you out of balance or you're going to be leaning forward like the Tower of Pisa, right? I want you to be able to stand upright. The only way you're going to be able to do that is get these guys on. Now what I want you to do is keep all those guys on. Take your hips back. The band's going to help you take your hips back. You're going to load into your hips and glutes. So do that for me as you go through your RDL. And what I'm looking for now is she comes back up. I want to, What I want to see from her, what I just saw was her back coming up first. That's common for a lot of people. I want to see her hips and butt come forward first. I want her to slow that down. I want her to learn to control it and go slow. So she's going slow enough she can feel and sense that it's her hips doing the work. And we're just going up to this tall position. That's good, please repeat. What I'm not wanting her to do is what you commonly see in a lot of the gyms where we go into hyperextension in the low back. We're targeting right here, the focus in an RDL primarily is glute in hamstring, right, posterior chain. The back muscles are working, but they're doing their job in terms of stabilizing. And we're trying to do basically a hip hinge, right, where we're bending at the hip and not arching on the low back. So when you came up on that one, your back came up first, I want you to think about driving your hips up and forwards, yep. So as she comes forward, I'm looking for her hip to do the work, that's better. So she's doing this, a lot of stuff's going on. Abs are on, multifidus is on, right? Stabilizers in the low back, glutes are on. Hamstrings are getting stretched and loaded. Quads are working, calves are working, backs working. Great exercise, and actually we're gonna get a lot more out of this RDL if we're doing this to work on glutes and posterior side. We're gonna get a lot more out of it, okay? 
The common way that people tend to do this oftentimes in the gym, and let's, why don't you go ahead and, and unhook, make this a little easier on you, and then come back out after you've unhooked on both sides. So one of the common exercises, or one of the common flaws I see in an RDL, remaining in deadlift on two legs, is that people are once again very quad dominant and very back dominant. So they think they're doing this to try to work on their glutes, so what I want you to do is just go ahead and, and go back into your RDL. And I want you to come up and what we're really watching here is if she's really gonna arch her back as she's coming up. And I see her back moving, go ahead and repeat. I see her back moving, coming up first. And then I see her hips following. I don't want the hips following. I want the hips to be the, the engine here like on the train. They should be driving this train and the back should be going along for the ride, okay? so. Transverse abs on, multifidus on, load back into your hips first, just take your butt back first. And as you come forward, drive your hips forward. Awesome. One more. Okay, cool. So that's a two-legged RDL. When it's done right, you can use the assistance of the band, you can use our hip trainer, all those things. In my world, when I'm working with an athlete, and they're going into the gym to do squats and RDLs, cleans, deads, anything like that. These are activation exercises where we get them to learn how to turn on their glutes, hamstrings, and cores where we're really coming, because most of those are hip exercises, yeah. but the way a, lot of the, a way a lot of the people do them is they become quadricep and back exercises, and those guys should be a part of the party versus I want them to be just joining into what the hips and glutes yeah. are doing, okay? Um, last thing we're gonna talk about is a single leg RDL. So um, I'm gonna have you go ahead and grab that kettlebell. And let's go on your, uh, let's go left leg. And what I want her to do then in this case is, yeah, I'm going to have her, so the kettlebell's in her right hand, we're going to stand on the left leg, and we're going to let the whole hips go back. So we're going to load back into your hips. And by the way, as she went back, what we need to find first is multifidus, transverse abs have to be on. We're going to try to hold that, and we're going to take the hips and load back into the hips. Go for it and bring it right back up. Awesome, slowly. And once again, I wanna see the hips come forward, not the back arching to stand back up. Notice how she's bending, go ahead and repeat. Notice how she's bending her right knee. I've asked her to do that. That will force her to get a lot more control out of her hips and pelvis and core when she's doing this exercise, okay? Okay. Now, one of the common things, you can relax for a second, maybe switch hands and switch directions. One of the common things that happens when you watch people doing single leg exercises, number one is <clears throat> they'll put the kettlebell in the right hand and they'll stand on the right leg. Um, that's not a very functional way to do it. So I prefer that you actually have a support leg, if it's your right leg, then the, the kettlebell's over here, or whatever you're holding on to, dumbbell, whatever. That works more functionally than probably the way you would do something in real life, okay? But one of the common things that happens is people's pelvis rotates. So if she's standing on her right leg, go ahead and do one, and you see the pelvis actually rock up like that, okay, and tip up, that's not what we want to do, right? We want her pelvis to stay square, like her belly button's pointing at the floor. That's the kind of control we're looking for. Turn the transverse abs on, get the multifidus on, sit back into your abs, don't let that thing rotate. That's awesome. What I'm looking for is the ability not only to just load her glutes, but I'm looking for the whole lumbar spine, the pelvis, and everything to move together. That way, when I'm working with athletes, I want them strong through their core, all the way from their hips and butt, all the way through their shoulder, and I don't want to see a bunch of stuff moving around. I want it pretty rigid, pretty strong. That's going to help them jump higher, run faster, hit, throw, kick, and punch for more power, okay? That's all we've got for you for this segment. We'll see you next time. If you like this video, please like it down below. Please subscribe. And if you want any further information about our products, go to powercore360.com.